Hello again everybody, it's me, Madame Macabre, and I'm back with another weekly journal. So, uh, this week actually I was dealing with a friend who is... She's having a rough time right now because she's dealing with a guy that is trying to do the whole, uh, friend zone guilt thing. Like, he's trying to make her feel bad for not wanting to date him even though she's never felt that way about him. And she's really stressed out and I feel really bad and that's frustrating me. So guess what today's topic is going to be and it will actually be a story time. Cause uh, I really have a special place of dislike in my heart for people who try to make you feel like you're a bad person for not dating them out of pity or not dating them because they want you to. People who abuse the whole friend zone thing when they were the ones who set things up for failure to begin with. Uh, I actually, this story is from years ago, like high school years ago kind of time period. Um, it's, it's a harrowing story from the past that I don't really bring up frequently because it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just glad that's over with and dealt with. But, you know, there's a friend going through this right now, not the exact same thing, but she's going through it. And there might be some of you who are going through something similar like this too. So I figure I'll, I'll go ahead and share a friend zone Gary with you. So story time. Basically, back in high school, I was really, really good friends with a girl named Julie, and she was dating this guy, we're calling him Gary, and they had been going steady for quite a while, actually, like, in high school terms. They were, like, going on, like, four and a half, five months together, and in high school terms, that really, that really is, to, like, you know, how fast those relationships come and go. But I digress. So, she was really serious about Gary, and she actually thought that, you know, he would be the high school sweetheart that she married, because her parents were high school sweethearts, and they married, and they've been happily together for like 30 years. So, uh, she's like, hey, maybe this is, this is my love story. So, she was really into him, and so she decided that she wanted him and I to meet, because, you know, you don't generally go out of your way to to befriend and hang out with somebody else's uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. I mean, unless you are already friends with to begin with and you introduced them, that's one thing. But if, like, I did not know Gary at all. I've seen pictures of, I had seen pictures of him on her Facebook and she's told me about him, but I never actually met him myself. So uh, it's not like I would have gone out of my way to find him and hang out with him and try and spend time with him because that's not really something you do. Uh, or at least not what I do. So she wanted us to meet together because she's like, you're a really good friend of mine. You've been friends with me for years and you're a part of my life. And him and I are going really steady and he's a big part of my life. And I want you both to uh, become friends and then we can all, you know, happy, yay, everyone get along and hang out. And I was like, well, well okay, you know, if, if that'll make you happy, sure. So we all hung out together sometime later after that, and oh gosh, right off, just remembering it makes me uncomfortable. Right off the bat, uh, this Gary fellow, he's one of those people that just, it, he's got, had a creepy vibe. Like everything about him was just so creepy. He had no personal bubble, like I'm someone that, I'm not super like, tiny bubble like I like my personal space but I'm not gonna have a, a panic attack if somebody you know gets real close to me or something but he he set me extremely on edge because it's not like he just occasionally get closer or something like he'd gravitate in to your bubble and he would just like stay way too close to you and then like he'd touch you when he's talking to you and like just, it, it came off really creepy. And like, he had this really intense stare that he would give. Like, he'd be telling a story or asking a question and he'd be waiting for my response and he'd just do this like. 
intense look like he was trying to psychically control my answer to say what he wanted or something it was really creepy and I've got other friends who met the scary guy other women and he did it to them too and they were so freaked out but uh, again I was like okay maybe he's just an awkward guy and some people are socially awkward at first when you first meet them and then they they chill out when you get to know each other better so I decided to give that the benefit of the doubt and uh, that was a bad idea because after that hangout was done, he uh, he insisted he get my number so that we can all keep in contact, whatever. And uh, you know, Julie was there in the room, and she's just she, she was just like head over heels for this guy. So she's like, "Oh yeah, great idea, great idea." And I'm like, "I really don't want him to have my personal information." But uh, so I ended up giving him my number anyway, and like I swear, as soon as I left, he started texting me like, "Hey there." You know, uh, asking me all this stuff like, so what do you what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Wow, it was so great hanging out with you. It was so great getting to meet you. I think you and I should hang out together a lot more often. And I'm just like, yeah, maybe when when Julie can hang out again. Yeah, we can we can do that. And then um, you know, he he wanted to hang out just one on one with with the two of us. So. Uh, I, I was really, really uncomfortable with that, but he did not let up. And, uh, cause like, I, I was giving really, like, mmm, I was trying to be very clear with my signals and my responses that I was uncomfortable, but he just kept doing the, come on, friend, hey, friend, hey, friend, 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 friend. So he used the word friend in excess. So I was like, okay, he's given me the heebie-jeebies, but he's calling me friend clearly so he understands like he, maybe he's just he's just awkward again and he really wants to try and be friends with me so i decided that okay okay if it'll get him to stop bombarding me maybe i'll hang out with him as a friend as he himself so clearly put so i told julie about it because she was working the day he wanted to hang out so I went and hung out with him. I don't even remember what we were doing because this was years ago. Just I remember being so uncomfortable the whole time. I mean, again, with the bubble like invading and like the touching, but on top of that, he kept making like jokes and really inappropriate comments like regarding myself. Like it's, it's one thing to uh, tell somebody that 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 shirt you're wearing is very pretty. I like that shirt. Why, thank you. But it's another thing to go, oh my gosh, that shirt just does wonders for your bust. Excuse me? Yeah, so, uh, that, that's the kind of stuff I was dealing with. Someone invading my bubble, making inappropriate comments, touching me, made me hella uncomfortable. So I decided, you know what, I, I'm not gonna hang out with him anymore unless I am directly with Julie because he cuts back on all the creepy stuff when Julie's there. So, uh, time goes on. He's still unrelenting about m sending me messages, all these weird, awkward questions and stuff, but then he'd always proceed with, hey friend, hey friend, hey there friend, hey friend. So I'm like, uh, okay. And then out of the blue, one day I get a call from Julie who's in borderline hysterics because their five month anniversary was two days away and he had called her. He didn't even see her in person. He called her and broke up with her. And the only reasoning he gave was that because this part that really still frust me, frustrates me to this day. They had been going strong for five months. He had no problems with her. There were no issues that she was doing that made the relationship bad. He had simply decided that he had gotten stronger feelings for me. Yeah. So, she was telling me this while in hysterics, kind of scared because that, because we, he had told her how close we had become. She was scared that I was going to start dating him and she, I basically told her that, for one, I would never date him because, okay, you do not do that to your friends. And two, I had never been more unattracted to a person in my life. I'm sorry, just people have different things that they're attracted to and he hit all the negatives in my book and I was not attracted. Even if he was a perfect 10 out of 10 on my scale of what I look for in a man, I still wouldn't have done it because she was my best friend. But regardless, so 
had no interest in that because what he did to my friend for one, and he just, I was not attracted to him for the, for the other one. I keep getting off, out of center. Anyway, so that, even though she was, she was still devastated, but that made her feel a little bit better, not having to, to worry about me betraying her like that. So, and then she act, so basically she told me that and then she said that uh, he actually told her not to talk to me about it because he didn't want her messing with our relation, our non-existent relationship. So he told her not to talk to me. And uh, mind you, I've been friends with her for a long time and I just met him and all, I was so mad. Um, so I am fuming mad at this point and then I get a text message from him. Hey friendo, you wanna, you wanna hang out? All this, hi friend, all this. So he had told my friend that he didn't want to be with her because he had strong feelings for me and that she wasn't supposed to talk to me because he didn't want her to ruin our relationship. So you're calling me friend. You've been doing all this friend, 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 friend stuff. When in reality, you have every intention of not being friends. So uh, that kind of set off my boiling point and I just, I stopped responding. This was before, like, I, I was in high school. I didn't know how to do the phone block and all that stuff. So I just ignored everything he said to me after that point. Just completely ignored him and tried to console my friend and make her feel better because she had her heart broken. Uh, jump forward a week. One of my other friends who, this friend, by the way, did not really know Julie all that well. She didn't know that she had been dating Gary for that long. She didn't know that they were dating at all. She just thought Gary and Julie had been friends and they just weren't friends anymore. Gary had gone to my other friend and he pulled on this routine of how I had so cruelly friend zoned him. He, uh, he had put all this time and effort into trying to be a good potential boyfriend to me and I, I just stopped responding to him for no reason and he couldn't see why and it was just so cruel how I had friend zoned him that way and my friend, again this is high school, like it, she, she was, the, the thing with this guy Gary is he's very good at manipulating people's emotions so he was able to manipulate my friend into thinking that I had been treating him cruelly and she decided, okay, because she got to know him a little bit and she felt bad for him, decided, okay, you know what, maybe I, maybe she's just, you know, not seeing the right side of you, maybe this, maybe that. I'll, I'll help it smooth it over. So she starts trying to get me and Gary to hang out together and I'm like, no, 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 I want nothing to do with him. And she eventually resorts to when her and I are going to be going to the mall together, brings him along last minute notice. So I, the, the day that we're going to the mall, she, right before we go to the mall, she springs it on me that he's coming to the mall. And uh, I don't talk to him, I don't address him, I don't even look at him. I just act like he's not there and I talk to her. And uh, he doesn't like this, of course, so he hangs way back and puts on this big theatrical... <sighs> ...show, like, hanging back from us, and this is just further adding gasoline to my raging fire of hatred, and uh, I'm getting more and more fed up with this guy, and basically, we're, we're still kind of in earshot of him, and my friend is basically like, come on, why is it that you won't give him a chance if, if you like him enough to be good friends with him? You know, isn't there an opportunity for something else? Like, he clearly likes you. And then that's at the point when I realized that she completely didn't have a grasp on the actual situation, that she had been gravely misinformed. So this, this I will admit was my, my, my fault. I, uh... I went a little overboard and I basically went on a rant to her about how he was, I, I told her exactly what he had done to my friend Julie, what the situation was, and that 
there was not a single man on the face of the planet that I could possibly be less attracted to than him and that he had zero redeeming qualities and he was just the most disgusting pile of human excrement I have ever seen and other things along that train of mean high school girl insults you can throw at a guy who's pissed you off. And I, I shouldn't have gone so overboard, but I was livid. So he, of course, runs off at that point in a, a flare of dramatics. And uh, I, I'm fuming and I go off on my way. And okay, time jumps forward again. And me, my other friend, and Julie, we're, we all work through things because we all realize exactly what's going on and how he was the one who caused all that crap to go down. But somehow he still managed to like stir up some drama. It was high school, of course, that always happens about how the, the cruel friend zoner that I was and all that. And he tried, he tried to get some of my other friends to do this. He tried to do the same thing. This idiot tried to do the same thing with some of my other friends. But at that point, word had traveled and they're just like, dude, stop. You're embarrassing yourself. But so yeah, he was just, anyone who would listen, he'd crusade against the horrible friend zoning women. But. So that, that was my personal experience with one of those uh, self-indulging people. And mind you, this isn't just a guy thing. There are women who can behave really, really badly to being rejected as well and can also pull the friend thing and then have different ex expectations. Like, uh, I won't go into the story now because it's a different story for a different time, but in also in high school, I was really close friends with a guy and this girl that I barely knew, she decided that, like, she's one of those girls who's running around falling in love with every guy who seems interesting for the moment, and that week's flavor was my guy friend, and I hardly knew her, but she decided to, uh, come at me with how in love she was with my friend, and how, uh, she just really just, he was her soulmate and all that stuff, and she, she hadn't even really met him, so she tells me all this stuff and then she goes up to him and she's like oh I want to be friends with you like like she is friends with you I really I love the idea of friendship blah 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 well time passes and basically again another story uh, maybe I'll get into this another time but basically he realized exactly what she was doing she only wanted to be friends with him because she wanted to date him and he turned her down and said he just wasn't really interested in having any further association with her and she, she was actually being just as creepy as Gary, if not worse, but uh, basically she didn't take it well and she threw on an even more dramatic fit. So ladies can also do this. Basically, the whole friend zone thing, in a, as a general rule, is just crap. It's people who cannot take rejection, so they need to blame it on the person who rejected them. It's not fun to get rejected, but that's life. and. People don't owe you dating them out of pity or whatever you want. Oh, you know, I'm I'm so sad that you don't return my feelings. I'm sorry you're sad, but that doesn't mean I have to date you to make you feel better. If you want to actually be somebody's friend, and then you develop feelings for them along the way, that's a different thing. But again, they're still not required to return your feelings. No one's required to return your feelings, and you can't get mad at them for not doing that. Yeah, it, it sucks, but that's the way it is. And it's the absolute worst when you pretend to want to be somebody's friend when in reality you just want to get into their pants. And then you have the audacity to say they're friend zoning you when you set it up as a friendship kind of thing. Don't tell someone, don't approach somebody all friendly like, hey friend, let's hang out, let's do this, and then get mad when they see you as a friend. Be straightforward if you like somebody. Seriously, it's scary, but if you genuinely don't want to run into the whole friend zone thing be straightforward about your feelings and you will get a straightforward answer back who knows over time if they say no i'm not really interested in dating you maybe if you really like the person and you just want to be their friend maybe they'll develop things over time maybe they won't but it's it all comes down to just people don't owe you dating them and that's what's got me disgruntled this week because I got a friend dealing with this nonsense and I'm, I'm tired of this mindset and stuff happening. Alrighty, next week I will have another weekly journal 
and I think I'll do a more lighthearted, funny topic after that. So that is all for this week. I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye!